The invention of zero is one of the most important mathematical discoveries of all time. However, humanity took a lot longer to develop the concept of zero, and even longer to develop the mathematical rules around this number. In fact, at times it was considered satanic or demonic. So how exactly was zero discovered? And why does it matter? Let's start with the latter. Without zero, you wouldn't have concepts such as binary numbers, so computers wouldn't exist. Calculus and other advanced mathematical techniques wouldn't exist as they heavily depend on the use of zero. And even simple mathematical calculations such as addition would become immensely difficult without the concept of zero. Before inventing zero, mathematics was a field solely under the influence of the upper class. Mathematical and numerical calculations in general were highly context dependent. Consider the two numbers 44 and 404. We had a symbol to represent the number 4, but we weren't able to represent the number 0 with anything except an empty space. Now imagine learning from the ancient equivalent of a textbook. You see 313 plus 91, and we know this is equal to 404, but in the textbook it looks no different to 44, which means you may incorrectly learn that 313 plus 91 is equal to 33 plus 11. This confusion could only be navigated by someone who had a teacher with a knowledge base to understand this context. And as a result it would be incredibly difficult for someone outside of the elites to gain a mathematical education. However with the simple introduction of the number zero, it becomes significantly easier to learn these concepts and in a sense zero democratised mathematics. The first evidence we have of zero is from Sumerian culture in Mesopotamia around 4000 years ago. They used a symbol that looked like a double wedge to indicate the position of a digit so 102 and 12 could be distinguished from one another. We've seen this knowledge somewhat independently appear in the Mayan civilization in South America. Here zero served as a demarcation or a placeholder and did not actually have a mathematical use. In fact, for all the romanticizing of ancient Greek mathematicians, they neither had a name for zero and even more surprisingly, they didn't even have a character to represent it, though they later adopted this from the Babylonians. So when did zero evolve from just being a placeholder to having significance in a mathematical context? Well this occurred in the Indian subcontinent where many prominent but underrepresented mathematicians set the foundations for an idea that would revolutionise humanity. In these civilizations, we see zero being used as a placeholder, such as in the Bakshali manuscript which contains the first written use of zero in the Indian subcontinent. Dating to around the 3rd century AD and originating in modern day Peshawar, it also covers methods for calculating mathematical quantities such as the square root, spawning what we now call the Bakshali technique. We need to look around 650 AD to find the first real rules of how to use zero mathematically. This was developed by Brahma Gupta, who was an Indian mathematician and astronomer born in modern day Rajasthan. He deserves a dedicated video to discuss the significance of his discoveries, such as being the earliest recorded figure to describe gravity as an attractive force, beating Newton to the punch. So consider subscribing to see that video and more on the history of mathematics. What we want to discuss here is what Brahmagupta did for the discovery of zero. He invented the rules for addition, subtraction and multiplication with zero, and also developed the concept of negative numbers. This was presented in his book, for example, in this book he wrote down zero as an additive identity, meaning any number plus zero is still equal to that number. These rules were later developed and refined into what we now call the field axioms of mathematics. His only omission was the division by zero, something that had to wait until the 16th century for Newton and Leibniz to tackle this problem. However, Brahma Gupta's discovery of zero set the scene for all of their work and they later discovered the field we now call calculus. It is abundantly clear that discovering zero was extremely difficult in history. Moreover, did you know in the Dark Ages, Europe in fact banished the concept of zero as a satanic principle? This puts into context the mathematical contributions of other civilizations, such as those in the Indian subcontinent, that drove much of the mathematical discoveries we take for granted. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe, and check out other videos in this series. Thanks for watching.